we have an example problem here. A, peril, a parallel plate capacitor is charged such that each plate has a surface charge density of 78 nanocoulombs per meter squared. One plate is positive, the other is negative. So positively charged and negatively charged. If the plates are three millimeters apart, what is the electric potential difference between the plates? Okay, so we have our two plates. We know the surface charge density, one of them is positive, the other one is negative. So there is an electric field between the plates. We know the electric field between the plates of a capacitor can be calculated knowing the surface charge density and our constant epsilon naught. We know electric field points positive to negative, so we know the direction it points in the picture with the way I chose to draw the picture. So we know eta. That's the 78 nanocoulombs per meter squared. That's given in the problem. The plates are three millimeters apart. This distance is three millimeters. Okay, so delta V, our fundamental equation relating potential difference to electric field is delta V is the negative integral of E dot dS. Since I want the potential difference between the plates, I'm going to make my initial point the left plate, my final point the right plate, so that my delta S points with the electric field. So delta S will be my distance D also to the right. I think I said left. I apologize if I did. So I'm going with the electric field. Now the electric field is uniform, so I can pull that out of the integral and say that delta V in this specific case is negative E dotted with integral of dS is going to be my delta S. Now the reason I am choosing my delta S to be with my electric field is just to make my theta zero degrees. Whenever we write a dot product equation in terms of the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of theta, theta must be the angle between the two. And so I just chose to go with the electric field in that situation. So that leaves me with negative E times D. Because delta S has a length of D. I've chosen the direction so E and delta S are in the same direction. So cosine of zero degrees is one. Our electric field is that surface charge density over epsilon naught. And then we have D. So delta V, 78 nano, so 10 to the negative 9 coulombs per meter squared times D, I will want this in meters, over Epsilon naught is the 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 Coulomb squared over Newton meters squared. That's a 2. Okay, so plugging these in. I'm getting 26, oh, negative, 
Now units, let's see, my coulombs will cancel with one of these. These meter squares are gonna cancel. My Newton is gonna come on top. So I have Newton times meters over coulombs, which is a joule per coulomb, which is a volt. Now the negative sign, the reason we're getting a negative sign, if you remember, delta V means V final minus V initial. Since we're dealing with scalars here, to get a negative an answer means V final has to be smaller than V initial. So all that's telling us is that the negative plate is lower potential than the positive plate. Now, by the way, getting an answer of negative 26 just means the positive volts higher than the here, the, than the negative plate. It doesn't tell me the positive plate is 26 volts. The negative plate doesn't have to be zero. It just tells me the difference between the two. Now, technically, we are gonna talk about capacitors more soon. We typically just describe the magnitude of the electric potential because we already know the electric potential is higher on the positive plate and lower on the negative plate. So it's kind of redundant to include the negative sign. Plus we could have integrated from the negative plate to the positive plate and we would have come up with a positive answer. But either way, it would be 26 volts. So that 26 volts is a, an important piece of information when we start talking about capacitors in a circuit.